Hello again everyone, Tim here, back again for Droid Life. Thank you so much for tuning and back into the channel. Today got sort of a, not really too different thing, but we're going to take two old concepts and kind of concepts that we do every year and kind of cram them into one because we are so gosh darn busy with both the new Z Flip 3 and the Z Fold 3 from Samsung. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what would usually be two videos, the first 10 things to do and my, I don't know, a thousand plus tips and tricks videos, and I'm going to just cram them into one video, hopefully try and make it, you know, not too long for you. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab your all new Galaxy Z Flip 3, going to grab some popcorn and just kind of hang out with me for the day. <laughs> and we're, I'm going to give you a personalized tour of your fancy new flip phone. So there is a lot to go over. Um, Samsung makes a lot of sort of redundant ways to access different features. And of course, you know, being one UI 3.1.1 running on top of Android 11, there is a lot of just stuff to kind of look at. So Let's just get right into it here. This is our first 10 things to do, plus a whole bunch of tips and tricks for the Z Flip 3. All right, so we're just going to dive right in. The first thing I want to talk about is sort of what I do when I first uh, set up a Samsung device because I'm so used to Pixel devices and the way Google does things that there are a few things that I have to do right off the bat when it comes to Samsung devices and One UI in general. So first thing is first, when I'm setting up new applications, and I'm trying to log into them using my Google uh, my Google saved credentials. I need to make sure that Google's autofill service is enabled and not Samsung Pass. So in order to do that, you simply open up that settings menu here. Then you can just scroll down and go to general management and under language and keyboard, date and time, etc. Scroll down a little bit, you're going to see the autofill service right there. And right there, typically when you out of the box, it's going to be autofill with Samsung Pass. Um, if you have everything saved with Google, go ahead, type it into Google right there. And then thanks to uh, the workings of Gboard and all that stuff, if you're also going to have to download Gboard, um, all of your Google Save credentials are going to pop right in automatically, auto-populate into those apps that you're logging into. So that's just something I like to have. Um, if you've been using Samsung devices for a while and you use Samsung Pass, that's totally great. But for, for someone who's coming from Pixel devices or non-Samsung devices in general, Google Autofill is definitely the service you're going to want to have uh, loaded up. And when it comes to kind of Samsung services versus Google services, I also offer Google Pay uh, versus Samsung Pay. Not really a big deal. Both work the same exact way, and you can have both services loaded onto your onto your device. Not a problem. Uh, but because Samsung Pay is now using NFC and not so much MST like it was, um, because everywhere is now kind of supporting NFC, it doesn't really matter what service you use. But still, I just have everything kind of saved to Google Pay, so it's really easy for me. So if you dive into here from that settings menu, you're going to go into Connections, NFC, and Contactless Payments. You can just make sure that's enabled. And then uh, from, it kind of gives you an overview of what the service does. And then down here, contactless payments and then GPay. See, I haven't even downloaded Samsung Pay just because I haven't used it. But here's where you're going to be able to choose between Samsung Pay and GPay. Not a problem. Uh, use whatever you want, but uh, I, I recommend Google Pay just because I can use it on any old device. Uh, also, Android 11, of course, has bubbles, the floating notifications, as Samsung calls it. And in order to quickly enable those right out of the box, you're going to want to go into notifications and then under advanced settings. And right here, you're going to find floating notifications. Now, Samsung had the uh, smart pop-up view, I think, in years past. But now with Android 11 and that sort of feature being native to Android, you just enable bubbles, but then that's where things get a little interesting. Now you can enable bubbles, not a problem, but you have to enable them per each application, which is sort of a pain. So in order to do that, let's go ahead as soon as uh, once you have that enabled, that's a good thing. And then once you're going to um, have that enabled, you're going to need to go into your different applications. So in order to do that here, you need to first you know determine what applications you want to have. Uh, floating bubble. So for example, I want Telegram and I want the Google Messages app, which looks like the Samsung app, but eh, long story short, uh, it is the Google Messages app. And in order to do that, you're just going to, what I do, I just long press on the application itself. I hit that little I button. And then under notifications, you can go to show as bubbles. Now you can have certain conversations within that app 
show you uh, bubbles only or you can have all and because everyone I talk to on telegram is very important to me I just have it set to all so whenever a new notification comes in through telegram or Google messages or what have you it's going to pop up as a bubble now the same goes for Facebook Messenger etc all of it has to be enabled manually at least from what I have experienced um, so again for example Google messages me uh, notifications show as bubbles all uh, same thing goes for uh, Facebook Messenger if we go to Messenger we go boom we go notifications show as bubbles all so whatever application it is you want to use with bubbles and have those bubbles pop up you're going to want to make sure that floating or like the bubbles slash floating notifications are enabled and then you have to no uh, enable them per application kind of a pain uh, but it works uh, speaking of notifications let's dive right back into here so note uh, Samsung gives you an option between brief uh, sort of like a single line that pops up here in the top with a quick blurb about what your notification is or you can get detailed notifications like a full card that drops down I go for the detailed notifications I don't want to have like a message kind of uh, cut off too short I want to be able just to read it and not have to dive into the actual notification shade so I go for detailed you can opt for brief doesn't really matter but I just go for detailed uh, then also this is where you're going to find do not disturb uh, do not disturb and this is one of those things that we always talk about in the first 10 things to do you can go into here you can do a schedule I just do every day 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. the next day uh, but then of course you can program things that you want to kind of go through that do not disturb walls such as alarm sounds certain applications certain calls from people uh, that's this is where you're going to find that so that's all inside of the notification settings now also uh, under that notifications menu is where you're going to find advanced settings Samsung loves advanced settings so from this menu is where you're going to find your battery percentage up here for the top I keep it enabled doesn't necessarily matter is where you're gonna find your notification history your certain conversations again that floating notifications thing uh, but then also this is where people can enable and disable the wireless emergency alerts I know some people aren't a huge fan I like to think to myself well if say God you know God forbid I had a child and it went missing uh, what it you know I would want everyone to be able to try and help me locate uh, said person so you can have amber alerts or if you want to know that that next hurricane is on the way or what have you uh, you know wildfires there's so many threats out there these days so just being able to have those alerts kind of come into your phone it can be helpful I get that they can be annoying or scary uh, when it goes burr, burr, burr. but you know better safe than sorry so uh, this is under the notifications menu and wireless emergency alerts that is where you can enable and disable all of those alerts so Good to know and next up we need to talk about the displays so thankfully Samsung makes it very easy they have a, a dedicated menu for the uh, main display and a dedicated menu for the cover display obviously on the whoop, on the Z flip 3 you've got this sort of one point some odd inch I think it's 1.9 inch cover display here and you can access a dedicated settings menu for that display so let's just go right down the line here we're going to go through display first and there's always a few things in here that I like to point out obviously light mode versus dark mode I personally am on the dark side uh, you know to each their own it's sort of not a I wouldn't even say it's a personal preference really it's a uh, it's a scientific fact uh, dark mode is better <laughs> so it's hard to be objective about it sorry I think it just looks a lot better some people prefer it, whatever so this is where you access that light versus dark uh, a lot of times now with Android 11 thankfully a lot of applications will automatically switch over depending on what your system theme is set to uh, but of course you can kind of manually change all that um, you can set a uh, schedule for it if you want it to turn on at a certain time that's totally fine um, whatever you want to do not a problem uh, as I did in the unboxing I kind of showed where the motion smoothness is and that's where that adaptive refresh rate is so I set mine to adaptive that allows it to go from very low refresh rate all the way up to 120 Hertz uh, of course if you want longer battery life as Samsung puts it uh, this phone does have a slightly smaller battery uh, you can just set it to 60 Hertz and it'll just stay right there I like to keep mine at 120 Hertz allows it to be nice and quick 
kind of hard to see. I know uh, my video is capped at 30 frames a second, but this phone has felt very snappy. The software is very nice. Animations are very smooth. So I recommend having it on 120 hertz. Um, I mean, you're not expecting this thing to last all week anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It charges quick. Um, scrolling down, I Comfort Shield. Again, I just have mine set to a schedule, uh, and that kind of brings down the blue light from the display itself at nighttime. Uh, I have mine just set from sunrise to sunset, and I bump up that color temperature. Uh, I'm pretty sure out of the box, out of the box it's off, but then also it's adaptive. Um, I mean, adaptive is fine, but when I have it turned on, I really want it cranked up. So when I go custom and out of the box, I think that the color temp is like way down here. I crank it. Cranked. And that way, it really brings down that blue light. It's very easy on the eye. Uh, I very much appreciate it. So, sunrise to sunset, it's going to ask for your location. Then, based on your location, it's going to uh, smartly, automatically kind of toggle that on and off. Uh, scrolling down a little bit here, we've got the, where is it? The, ah, edge panels. So edge panels on these Samsung devices, there's this little panel here. Out of the box, it, it, um, it is enabled. Um, you can access f uh, frequently used applications. You can customize all this stuff. I, so edge panels is one of the first things that I disable on a Samsung device, especially with Android 11 and the gesture controls. I don't want to accidentally open up edge panels. Um, other people might be a fan of it. I personally, not the biggest fan, but you can enable different panels. You can enable a weather panel, tax, uh, tasks panel, clipboard, reminders. It's definitely good for, I guess, the multitasking crowd or people that want sort of like those power user sort of features. But I mean, I would consider myself a power user and I don't really get all that much out of it. Plus, I, it just sort of... I'm not the, the biggest fan. Um, you can obviously change where the handle, the, the, they call this part the handle. You can change how that looks and where that is, which is great, um, whether it be on the left or right. Um, definitely up to you. It's a, that's definitely a personal preference, uh, whether you want edge panel enabled or not, but there it is. And then the last thing under display that I always talk about is the navigation bar. And this is one of those first 10 things. This is what you decide what you want to do right out of the box. If you're going to want the swipe gestures that came with Android 11, or you want Samsung buttons. Uh, for me personally, I go with the, um, swipe gestures. I think it's just a sort of a much better experience. Um, uh, Especially with the Android 11, they've definitely kind of baked those in and made them very nice. So right there, and then also you can uh, enable gesture hints or disable gesture hints, whatever you want to do. And then you can show button to hide the keyboard. I always leave that enabled uh, because you're going to, sometimes when you uh, need the keyboard app to pop open, it doesn't pop open or you want it to pop down. Uh, you need to kind of get it out of your way. You definitely want that button there. So that is where that is. I would just take a few minutes. I'm not going to walk through every single feature here in the display settings, but I would recommend uh, when you pop open this device, definitely scroll through the displays, kind of look at all the different features you can go through uh, because there is a absolute ton. Now that we've talked about the main display, got to talk about that cover display. And again, thankfully, Samsung does build in a dedicated section for it, but there really isn't all that much to talk about. You can change up the clock style, which is fine. I got this cute little guy. You can change it to this number thing or this monkey animal thing. Well, that's a rabbit. <laughs> but you can, uh, it, it scrolls through different animals and you can change that. You can change up the clock color. Uh, on the always on display for the main display, you can enable a gradient color, but on the cover display you can't, which is unfortunate. Uh, but just know this is where you can customize all these goodies. I kind of opt for like this kind of pinkish blue guy. It's a nice little thing. And then on the cover, you can enable and disable different widgets. Music widget, weather widget, schedules, alarm, Samsung health, etc. Now you access those, if you didn't already know. Um, by just simply scrolling and you can scroll through so I have my music widget I've got my weather widget and then you can add different widgets um, and you can add them right from the cover display which is nice but it, I think it's just kind of a lot easier uh, just to do it from that cover display menu obviously you're working with a much larger display uh, up to you uh, whichever you want to do unfortunately there aren't really like any third-party 
supported applications that allow you to add widgets to the cover display, maybe in the future. Uh, I mean, this is the first time we've had like a really, I would, eh, borderline usable cover display. I don't want to get ahead of myself, uh, but it is nice to have. So that's where you can access all of that. And then what's nice is Samsung in these settings menus, they allow you to kind of quickly access other things and always on displays. Something again in our first 10 things videos, we always talk about, I have a set to show always. Um, but that's only accessible when it's on the actual kind of lock screen or the display is turned off on this main display. Um, there it is right there. And like I mentioned, I don't know if you can see it too well, but there is kind of a color gradient, which is always nice. And that's a, a access from clock style. And then down here at the bottom, they have the different gradients. So plenty of nice colors to choose from. I sort of opt for that kind of rainbowish color, different clocks. You can choose photos. You can add GIFs. Uh, there's a whole bunch of fun stuff uh, and of course you can you can set a schedule for it you can show music information there's just always on display has been getting better and better and I love it uh, back from the settings menu again like I said this is just gonna be like a personalized tour of the settings menu but lock screen there's a few things on the lock screen I want to point out first being the smart lock uh, I always talk about smart lock I love smart lock uh, so when you have smart lock enabled say for your trusted places whenever you're at home you can add your address and then when you're at home the phone is just going to stay uh, automatically unlocked for you when you're at that location it can tell when it's on your body or when you have a device so let's say some bluetooth earbuds the device will stay unlocked so long as the those earbuds are connected to the device via bluetooth or say your car or whatever um it's just a nice little way of not always having to constantly unlock the device this device is a little bit different right because when i'm holding it my right thing my right thumb is always on that um that thumbprint that fingerprint sensor so when i go to open the device i can just quickly unlock it sort of like a natural motion uh but on a lot of other devices it's a nice thing to have so there's smart lock always recommend on the lock screen notifications are always sort of funky this was sort of a weird thing when one ui was originally coming out um so out of the box it's icons only i need details and this was like a big revelation kellen and i had on a droid life show i think like a year or two ago we didn't know this existed so detailed notifications on the lock screen yes please queen so you can choose up the transparency you can make it lower or higher you can auto reverse the text color you can hide certain content doesn't really matter all i know is out of the box this is what it is but that's not what people want we need detailed uh, notifications on the lock screen now, of course if you have a a sensitive data job or something you work for the fbi maybe you need your icons only whatever but for reg people uh for people like me i just i want to see what my notifications are on the lock screen so that's where you can access it also on the lock screen they have shortcuts and it's these guys right down here you can access your camera really quickly or your flashlight uh to kind of access them you just simply uh scroll out of them or tap on them i think no you gotta scroll out so uh from here you can actually uh customize which shortcuts there are so all the way down here at the bottom if you're on the lock screen boom all the way down at the bottom shortcuts you can enable them on and off and then you can choose what sort of uh you know feature you want to access from there so from the left shortcut i have flashlight but you can choose any application you want um there are certain things like so it specifies if you have to lock, unlock the device to use it or don't have to unlock so you won't need to unlock it for the calculator or the do not disturb feature or the flashlight which is what I'm using but to access an application you're definitely going to have to unlock it so just be aware of that um, but like I said like I'm using I just use the flashlight camera app seems pretty easy enough to me um, yeah so that's where you would customize that uh, going down there are widgets on the lock screen let me give you a preview of those so from the lock screen if I turn that on uh, if you go down you can access these widgets and widgets are recently played media um, so for you I was watching YouTube videos uh, shows your clock date time shows the weather um, shows the what you have on your calendar for that day and all of that is of course customizable 
So if we dive right back in here, widgets, you can choose what you want to see, what you don't want to see. So for, like I mentioned, I got my music weather today schedule. You can also have big speed routines if you're into that stuff, your digital well-being, and you can have it show on the always on display as well, which is nice, which I forget how you access exactly, but I know it's there. I think it's definitely a swipe. Let's see if I can figure it out real quick. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it. Eh. Yeah, oh, yeah, see, I, I just don't know. Um, it's one of those, he has, like, always these weird, like, kind of gesture things you have to learn. And, uh, eh, what are you going to do? Uh, moving on here, so that's the lock screen. Again, uh, there's always so many freaking things that I like to check out. Uh, you know, when you're first booting up, especially one of these Samsung devices, you can just get lost in the settings menu. Dynamic lock screen is actually pretty sweet. Um, you can have, I use this one for dogs and when you set it, it'll just change up your lock screen every time. So when you're on the lock screen, boom, now I've got doggies and you can change through different, you know, pictures of doggies. But, but every time you open your phone, you're going to have a new picture of doggies. So that's nice to have, uh, completely up to you. Um, you can choose to have your contact information placed on the lock screen. So there's just a ton of different stuff. And then this is also where you can quickly access the facial recognition, fingerprints. I love that Samsung does this looking for something else stuff in the bottom. It just makes it super nice, super handy to jump into other system settings. All right, now we are going to talk about the camera. And with the camera, there's quite a few things we need to talk about. First things first, you know, because you can like flip the device and all that, I want to talk about going into the settings menu and enabling voice commands. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, I believe, yes, um, where is it here? Yes, aha, I found it. So all the way down and then you go under shooting methods and then voice commands out of the box, not enabled. Uh, but we want them enabled uh, because as I was mentioning, if we turn on selfie mode here and you kind of, it has the flex mode. So with flex mode and voice commands, we can set our phone somewhere and then say cheese cheese and then we've got a little timer and boom it takes a picture so one of those nice little things that uh, you know Samsung kind of bakes in there there are other different system settings that we need to talk about though of course uh, we have the swipe shutter button to either take a burst shot or create a gif I've always got it set to create a gif I'll kind of show you how that works here in a second You've got your format, uh, format and advanced options. This is where you can literally choose um, if you want to shoot raw copies along with your JPEGs. Um, use wide angle group for group selfies. It can automatically switch to a wide angle lens when it detects that there's more than say two people. Um, selfie color tone. You can kind of choose if you want bright or natural. Uh, video stabilization, auto HDR, grid lines, which I definitely enable. Um, always recommend. I like it. Uh, there's just a lot of different you know, shutter sound on and off. I like to keep mine off. I, I feel like it can be a little annoying. Um, you can have the uh, floating shutter button, which is movable, but I'll kind of show you how to access that without messing with that setting here. So a lot of fun stuff. So let's say we want to shoot a GIF, uh, shoot a GIF. Um, when you're on the actual camera mode, you can simply on the shutter button, you can go over and swipe on it and hold it. And that is starting to create a GIF. Uh, you're allowed up to 30 frames and then you can quickly access that GIF and it'll, it'll show me here. Now it's playing back. Yeah, very nice. So if you're say looking at an action shot or what have you, and you want to create uh, quickly create a GIF, that's pretty awesome. Um, also with the shutter button. So as I showed you, I didn't mess with that setting. Uh, and I'll show you one more time just to make sure. So if you scroll all the way down and then under shooting methods, you've got your floating shutter button. Um, if this is disabled out of the box, don't even worry about it. You can literally take the shutter button and move it to wherever you want. Uh, and now you've got two shutter buttons. Uh, if I'm kind of holding my phone up here and I need to take pictures, something down here, uh, it works just like a regular shutter button. Then you can just drag it right back into your regular shutter button if you're done using it. So I like that. It's not a problem at all. And again, um, you know, with flex mode kind of being a thing, uh, it's nice being able just to talk to your device, but then also just realize that uh, a lot of all the, the settings are now you don't have to mess with that top screen portion. 
all of the uh, settings have been moved down onto the bottom half of the display so you, you've got your uh, wide angle lens you can access your aspect ratios uh, you can even you know access a, a ratio that takes up that entirety of the uh, front display so there's a lot of fun stuff to do in flex mode uh, don't know why that happened but yeah a lot of uh, different settings to choose down here and then also yeah again in the camera settings itself so one of those things where I just say well I, I need to spend five minutes to go through all of this and make sure I've got everything enabled um, you do have advanced recording uh, options that you can look at HDR 10 plus videos which is a labs feature there's a whole lot of stuff to check out so definitely go into your camera go into settings play with all that stuff get to know the different modes uh, down here on the bottom you've got your more and this is where you can access all of your modes and all these things can be uh, clicked and dragged and dropped and you can take them out put them back if you don't want them all that is customizable so highly recommend you go in there spend five minutes all right next up want to talk about the home screen uh, the home launcher and talk about customizing that sort of making it uh, good for you uh, really easily you can just dive right in you can long press and you can dive right here into settings settings is where you can access literally the home screen layout whether you want an app drawer or not uh, you can access the different grids uh, Samsung is now allowing a folder grid pretty sure that wasn't there uh, at least a year or two ago but now you can change it to a 3x4 to a 4x4 which allows you to have additional applications in this grid thank goodness uh, also accessible is show app screen button on home screen you can like literally have an app drawer button if you want that you know that's a flashback uh, lock the home screen layout if you don't want to change anything you've got all your widgets set in place you can tap that and then nothing can be changed you can't click and drag you'd have to undo it uh, you can hide certain applications if you're you know that kind of individual uh, then also you can swipe down for notification panel you can enable or disable that so let's say we're on the home screen you can just swipe down and then access your notification panel so all that stuff is accessible just by long pressing on your home screen and then clicking on settings also accessible by long pressing on the home screen is swipe to the right and then you can switch between Google Discover and Samsung free out of the box props to Samsung Sam, uh, Google Discover is enabled uh, of course you can literally turn it on and off uh, but and I offer Google Discover enabled it just kind of shows you Google stories based on your interests and and it sort of tracks you and what you're into and ads and all that good stuff you know typical Google stuff uh, so when you swipe over it's like oh, okay I can see my Giants are losing and pissing me off and all that good stuff uh, and then you can also add new pages if you need to delete old pages etc I mean it's sort of your typical Android home screen experience uh, a few things I want to talk about up here in the notification shade and system setting tile toggles uh, if we click down here on the little arrow you uh, can access your uh, brightness level but then also your adaptive brightness and then that uh, also will allow you to dive into the system settings for the display uh, if you scroll down again you've got this little three button here and this three button can be pretty important um, from here this is where you can access the buttons uh, in order to get a single page of buttons because I think out of the box it has like five different pages of system settings I mean look at all this stuff um, you simply have to get down to four eight uh, eleven uh, system toggles in total uh, so I kind of remove nearby share dark mode all mobile hotspot all these and that allows me to just have a single page and not have to scroll through different settings it's just more of a clean look for me um, that's just the way I like it but everyone is different you can have uh, as many or as few as you want um, then I you know I can quickly enable enhanced processing do not disturb etc uh, having quick access to all of that is what I appreciate also from that three dot you're going to be able to uh, access your status bar notifications all that uh, we sort of went over that again I kind of mentioned a redundancy that is Samsung's name of the game when it comes to uh, when it comes to system settings and being able to customize things uh, also from here you've got your quick panel layout uh, very important uh, you can have it toggled to where the brightness shows above notifications and you can also show media uh, devices and media buttons uh, it just gets a little crowded uh, when you bring this down there's like just too much going on uh, and out of the box this uh, brightness uh, slider is below the notifications it's just like not very uh, I don't know it's just not 
smart to me or it doesn't make a whole lot of sense I don't know how to really explain it but I prefer it to be on uh, above so I have the show brightness control above notifications and then I disable that uh, if you're jumping in and out of different devices that are connected to this device maybe it makes sense to have that uh, uh, that setting there where you can quickly jump in and out but for me personally uh, I don't necessarily need it so that is where you can access it um, but then again uh, yeah reorder these however you like they are totally uh, customizable you just edit the buttons you just long press drag drop whatever you want to do not a problem uh, moving on here want to talk about the phone this is a new feature for I think uh, one or three dot one dot one one UI uh, if you go into your phone app here, hit the little three buttons, settings, menu, and then call background. I can't do it because I have airplane mode toggled on, but in the call background, you can literally change. Like, there's different animations you can go through, different colors you can play with. Um, just a nice little touch that Samsung did. Uh, yeah. Uh, moving on here, we're going to dive into the settings menu again and go into the sound menu. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit, we should see sound somewhere, unless I'm totally blind. Ah, sounds and vibration. Yeah, I totally missed it. Sounds and vibration. So, down here there's a few things. I want to talk sound, quality, and effects. So, under here, this is where we access the Dolby Atmos. Um, you can toggle it on, off. You have it set to auto, movie, music, depending on what you kind of use the phone for mostly. I use it for a lot of music, uh, but I just kind of go with auto. Seems to sound fine for me. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it totally increases uh, the amazingness of audio you know, playing from the device, but it doesn't sound bad. Uh, what's more important to me is the actual equalizer for what's playing on the device. So right now I have a set to a rock equalizer. Brings up the mids, brings up the bass, uh, excuse me, drops the mids, brings up the highs, brings up the lows. And uh, that's I sort of like that scooped. Uh, uh, EQ, uh, at least on a 10 band EQ, that's what I like to do. Uh, but of course, you can change that. You know, you like jazz, that's fine. Classical, all which is more of also a uh, sort of a rock EQ setting uh, with kind of uh, scooped mids there. So that's what I appreciate. I appreciate the rock. You can obviously customize that. You can change up the, uh, the bands however you like. Uh, but I have mine set to rock. And then also down in here, we've got system sound and vibration control. Instead of here, this is where if you want certain things to vibrate or make system sounds, this is where you enable and disable all of that. And as you can see, there's a ton. So for example, if you're touching uh, buttons in your dialer and you don't want the phone to vibrate, you can disable that. If you don't want to touch key or if, when you touch keys and you don't want it to play sounds, you can enable that, disable that. All of that is accessible from the sounds and vibration menu. Uh, which is accessible right from the settings menu. So definitely jump in there. Look at all these different settings. There's there's a lot to look at. All right, folks, we have reached the end of the road, but don't worry, there's still quite a bit to talk about. We're at, we're at the home stretch, let's call it that. Uh, so down here in the settings menu, you scroll down a little bit and you'll see advanced features. Yes, there's a lot of stuff to look at here, but I'm only going to highlight a few things. First thing, side key. So the side key is what allows you to, it's this guy right here, it's your power button. You can uh, double press on it to quickly launch the camera, open Bixby, or open, open an app. You can open whatever app you want, doesn't matter. Um, now, out of the box, when you press and hold this button, it will wake Bixby. To me, unacceptable. So from the settings menu, I have it set to power off menu. Um, and again, when you... That way you long press it, you can literally access it. This stuff is also accessible by, by long pressing it and just going into side key settings. So that's good to know. Moving on here in that, uh, oh, let's jump right back into it. So uh, also in the advanced menu here, we've got motion and gestures. Uh, so right under side key, motion and gestures, boom. Lots of stuff to look at. So lift to wake, uh, let's say you've got your... Um, display turned off here it's just sitting there blah 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 you lift it and it will wake ah yes it works uh double tap to turn on the screen that's pretty uh that's like an old lg thing double tap to turn off the uh turn off the screen you have to tap it on empty space 
Empty space is sort of a weird thing on cell phones. There's always like something you can do there, but you just give it a double tap to turn off. You can keep the screen on while viewing. There's a whole lot of uh, different things to play with in here, but also in here is this finger, sen uh, finger sensor gestures. Um, uh, one little pro tip here is whenever you see a Samsung phone and one of the settings has this line going through it means you can tap on it to kind of read more about it learn more about it or there's different uh, settings for that actual feature so with this enabled uh, you can literally uh, scroll down on the fingerprint sensor uh, to access your notification bar so there's a whole lot of different ways to access that uh, which is nice also in here is where we uh, from the advanced features is where we access the one-handed mode. So right under motions and gestures, we've got one-handed mode. Uh, with that enabled and have it set to gesture and not just a button, uh, you can literally swipe down on the display. Here, I'll show you again here. So if you swipe down on the display, it goes into one-handed mode. That way, when I'm walking around, walking the dogs or whatever, I can literally do everything with one hand. Very nice. Uh, to get out of it, you can just tap on that. You can change sides. A uh, whole lot of stuff you can do. Um, this is also where you can access Bixby Routines. Uh, me, personally, I don't use Bixby Routines, but it is there if you need it. And then also from Advanced Features, you've got Send SOS Messages. Very interesting feature. Can be very helpful um, if you uh, feel the need to access it. This is where you do it. So if you turn it on here, uh, it'll kind of give you a spiel about what uh, what it does and then you just simply kind of have to give it all of the permissions that it needs and then so what will happen when it's enabled and who you set as your contact if you press the side key three times or four times it can auto call somebody it can attach pictures uh, to a message and it can also attach an auto re audio recording so basically what that does is these pictures the recordings um, it can give people clues if you are really like this is a straight SOS emergency uh, situation you know anything can help people who are going to respond uh, to your need so anything any more information you can give them about your location or anything like that um, who is maybe attacking you possibly um, you know god forbid uh, all that stuff helps so there is that you can access it quickly by hitting three times or four times um, hopefully uh, you'll never have to use it but it is there if you need it um, that is it for the stuff I want to talk about in the system settings there is one more little little tip I wanted to talk about so inside of Google Play now close it out that way it looks like you'll know exactly what to do so inside Google Play you can go into your settings here and just type on authentication and one thing I like, I love to enable is biometric authentication. Uh, that way, you know, I don't have to worry about unauthorized purchases being made on my account. And in order to enable that, you simply enable, and then you have to type in your Google password. Once your Google password is typed in, it's going to unlock this feature. And now every time that I try and uh, do a purchase there, I'm going to have to uh, do that. Uh, use my fingerprint to unlock the device to make a purchase so you can you know set it to every 30 minutes or never I just use it for all purchases why would I want to take a chance we get emails all the time about oh hey my kid accidentally uh, purchased this how do I get a refund etc yeah I'm pretty sure Google has a long policy about uh, yeah we don't allow that which is why all of this authentication stuff exists now because I think they were tired of uh, you know people maybe taking advantage of a certain system so either way that is that pro tip and that's really it that was like a thousand plus tips and tricks hopefully it didn't bore you too much we got there um, you know long story short this phone is really nice I've been enjoying using it quite a bit it's so gosh darn compact not too bad in the old pocket it's been really nice. It's a super huge improvement over the original Z Flip. So it's been a lot of fun to use. We've got our full review coming up. Kellen's got a whole lot of stuff with the Z Fold 3 coming up. So be on the lookout for that. And yep, hope, you, uh, hope no one fell asleep. <laughs> and we'll catch you next time. Peace.